Pole. And that's why we brought the South Pole to SeaWorld. <laughs> dollar for dollar, we believe you just can't beat the values you'll find every day at Aaron Sells Furniture. That's because Aaron Rents is one of the country's largest furniture rental companies. And when that furniture comes back from rental, you can buy it at our cost or below. Sometimes, though, we get overstocked with rental return and new furniture and need to clear it out at extra savings for you. That's when the overflow goes outdoors for Aaron Sells' giant parking lot sale. And it's happening this weekend. Don't you miss it. It's a sale too big to stay inside. I swear I'm in Mexico when I sample Weight Watchers burritos. Tender flour tortillas filled with beefsteak or chicken, brightened with beans and peppers and spices, or Weight Watchers enchiladas. Hearty corn tortillas filled with beef or chicken or cheeses, surrounded by the sauciest of sauces. Weight Watchers exciting new Mexican entrees transport me south of the border. Esto es vivir. The wait is over. A super allocation of new Hondas just arrived at Moody Honda. Save thousands. New four-door Accords with air, plus these extras, just ten nine eighty seven. New four-door Civics with air and all this equipment, just eighty eight eighty seven. Honda Civics and Accords, number one in quality. Save thousands. It's true because of this super allocation. But only while they last, and only at Moody Honda in Fort Lauderdale. Our green grocer, Joe Carcioni, is still in search of that perfect sweet onion. He sampled two more varieties. Hmm. Here's Joe's tip for the day. So far this year, we've received several different varieties of supposedly sweet mild onions, each and every one claiming to be the best and the sweetest of all. We've had the Y33 and the Grano and the 1015Y out of Texas. We've had the Imperial Sweet out of California and the Vidalia out of Georgia and the red onions, the Fresno Reds out of Fresno, California. All of these onions are, you know what you might say, fairly sweet, not exceptionally sweet, just seems to be an odd year for mild onions. But anyway, folks, we had a shipment today of the first Walla Walla onions out of Walla Walla, Washington. And you know, they're just about two weeks ahead of last year. And actually they say that the onion should have been picked on June 15th. These onions were picked a little bit before then. I have to tell you something, folks. I tested them just like I tested the other varieties. I put them into my mouth and I chewed them. They were juicy, they were sweet. As you continue to bite into them, they got burning. And then, folks, we have another new entry into the field of sweet onions. It is the Carcinia out of New Mexico. It claims it is the sweetest of all. And I have to tell you something, folks. I tested these, and again, I have to tell you, sweet when you first bite into them, but of course, Bernie, as you continue to, uh, to bite into them. But let me say this, folks. These are all fairly mild sweet onions. And of course, when you put them in vinegar, or you put them on a hamburger, or you put them in a salad, believe it or not, they taste much sweeter than they are. This is Joe Carcioni, your greengrocer, with your tip for the day. Too early in the morning to taste sweet onions for me. I could do it. I'd like a hamburger. Mm -hmm. I'd like a hamburger. The great horse trade. The incredible story of a man, his trade-in, yeah. and a legendary Pontiac dealer, Sheehan Pontiac. Where you'll find 87 Grand Ams from 99.88, Pontiac Sunbirds from 89.88, and great deals on top GMC trucks and pickups. It's the story with a happy ending for everyone. <laughs> well, almost everyone. If you're not buying from Sheehan, you're paying too much. She and Pontiac GMC, the legendary Pontiac dealer. If I were outside now, this would be no problem. But I'm sitting in my living room. Problem. Need money fast? Call Metropolitan Mortgage. We won't say no because of your credit or income. All we ask is, do you own your home? Me in the bank. And how much do you need? About two-thirds of a roof. No problem. So dial Freedom in Dade, Justice in Broward, or 1-800-EASY-YES everywhere else. Goodbye, pro. Stock Market Strategies, tonight, live at 5. Good morning. Jackie Gleason is dead. At the age of 71, he died of cancer late last night. From the beginning, Jackie Gleason was a TV giant who created lasting characters that grew with the medium and then endured. His portrayal of Ralph Cramden and the Honeymooners has remained a TV classic for several generations. But his talent wasn't confined to the tube. A versatile performer who gained honors also in films, on Broadway, and in the music world, Gleason was an entertainment presence larger than life who deserved his appropriate nickname. The great one 
is being mourned today, Thursday, June the 25th, 1987. From NBC News, this is Today with Bryant Gumbel and Jane Pauley. Good morning and welcome to today on this Thursday morning. Jane continues on her vacation. Maria Shriver continues to be with us up here. As, as you did, many of us here grew up with television and, of course, with Jackie Gleason. He is a man much missed this morning. We're going to devote a great deal of our next two hours to trying to remember the man. In just a few moments, we'll be talking with June Taylor about his television years. In our 7.30 half hour, we'll go over a bit of Gleason's film career with one of those who was privileged to direct him. That's Hal Needham. And in our 8 o'clock hour, a very special remembrance from his longtime co-star, Audrey Meadows, who was, of course, Alice, to Jackie's Ralph on The Honeymoon. Yeah. Also this morning, Bryant, we'll have more on the controversy over the failure of West Germany to extradite accused hijacker Mohammed Ali Hamadi. And then Gene Shalit will talk to Tom Hanks about the movie Dragnet. Let's get this morning started over at the news desk. Here's John Palmer. Good morning, John. Brian Maria, thanks. Good morning. First, Jackie Gleason, the great one, who died last night in Florida of cancer at the age of 71. As correspondent Charles Gomez reports, Gleason left a legacy of quality. From 1952 to 1957, Jackie Gleason immortalized the bluster of a bus driver from Brooklyn named Ralph Cramden. One of these days. <laughs> And three decades later, in reruns that introduced Ralph and Alice and oh. the Honeymooners to a new generation of TV fans, it was easy to see why many call Gleason the Great One. His comic timing was honed to perfection. What's my temperature, Norton? <laughs> Such routines helped the Honeymooners set the standards future sitcoms would imitate. For Gleason, the recipe for success was simple. You must have the ability when a bad script comes along to make it look good, to ad lib and to throw in a few extra lines, and uh, that's very, very important. Gleason was more than a comic. Right. His role as Minnesota Fats in 1961's The Hustler with Paul Newman brought him critical yeah. acclaim right. and an Oscar nomination. At Big John, do you think this boy is a hustler? As a frustrated sheriff in Smokey and the Bandit, Gleason was a box office draw. What are you thinking about? Retiring. But in real life, Gleason would never retire. His philosophy of life summed up in his own words, you only live once, let's live it up, how sweet it is. Jackie Gleason, dead at 71. Charles Gomez, NBC News, Los Angeles. In other news this morning, the stage is now set for the testimony of Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North before the Congressional Committee investigating the Iran-Contra scandal. North will testify in private next week with public testimony beginning July 7th. Pope John Paul II welcomed President Kurt Waldheim of Austria to the Vatican this morning, a meeting that triggered angry protests because of Waldheim's Nazi past. Stan Bernard reports. Jewish leaders have called this event, the meeting between the Pope and Austrian President Kurt Waldheim, a costly setback in Catholic-Jewish relations. The Vatican says this is a state visit requested by a democratically elected president and could not be turned down. In addition, the Pope made a visit to Austria in 1983, and another visit has been announced for next year. On the streets leading to the Vatican, a group of protesters, some of them former inmates of concentration camps, chanted, when does the Pope meet Barbie, referring to Klaus Barbie, the Gestapo chief in Lyon, France, who is now on trial there for war crimes. One of them said, it is useless for the Pope to visit Auschwitz and cry for our dead, and then receive this Nazi. An American rabbi came to organize and lead the demonstration. We are here for six million reasons. We are here for our brothers and sisters. We are here for the seven million Christians who were also murdered. Some of whom, some of whose murders were well known. By Kurt Waldheim. The depth of the controversy was made plain by the barriers set around St. Peter's Square. Less obvious, but perhaps more significant, are the number of diplomats of ambassadorial rank who avoided the ceremonies. Ambassadors not here include those from the U.S., the Netherlands, and Italy. Others were away on a holiday. Italy sidestepped, saying it is still without a permanent government and therefore could not receive Waldheim. Jewish and Israeli anger over this visit escalated to the point of an Israeli official meeting with a Vatican representative in an attempt to cool things down. The Israeli government withdrew its demand for a cancellation of the meeting and is now only asking for an explanation. Stan Bernard, NBC News, Vatican City.
Syria this morning imposed a virtual blockade on Shiite Muslim slums in South Beirut. That's where most foreign hostages are being held. Syria took the action after the kidnappers of American journalist Charles Glass failed to release him following demands from Syrian authorities in Beirut that he be freed. In South Korea, political concessions made by the government to opposition leaders have for now lessened the violence in the streets. But as Brian Stewart reports, the trouble is far from over. The opening of reform talks in South Korea has brought calm to the streets of Seoul, but there is growing fear today that the truce will be brief. The opposition, dissatisfied with government reform offers, plans a massive protest rally for tomorrow, despite official warnings that it will be illegal. Riot police are bracing for more clashes. U.S. officials have been meeting with the various factions, trying to keep the fragile negotiations alive, stressing optimism and the need to compromise. But Gaston Seeger, the State Department's top Asian expert, admitted today the political situation is still difficult. And he again urged the Korean military to stay out of the crisis. We oppose martial law. We would hate to see anything like that happen. U.S. officials have been watching the Korean military carefully in recent weeks. At the moment, they believe the generals here are not anxious to intervene. But they cannot easily predict how the military will react if political parties remain deadlocked and another wave of violence sweeps Korean cities. The immediate concern here is tomorrow's big day of protest, seen as a critical trial of strength for both sides. The opposition needs to show it can maintain the momentum of protest. The government is equally anxious to prove it is still firmly in control. Brian Stewart, NBC News, Seoul. And in baseball action last night, the New York Mets beat the Chicago Cubs 2-1, to one, dashing the hopes of Cub fans for a sweep of the current three-game series. Seven and a half now after the hour. Here's Brian. We're still in second, looking at a fourth-place club at Shea. Let's turn our attention to the weather, and for that this morning, we go out to Drexel Hill, Pennsylvania just west of Philadelphia, where we find Willard Scott. What's going on, Willard? Good morning. Hey, we're having a celebration, 60 glorious years of this magnificent Delaware County Memorial Hospital. And because I had 400,000 relatives in Pennsylvania all of my life, it's not Delaware, it's Delaware. Delaware County Memorial Hospital. We'll be celebrating all morning. We have the paramedics back here in case anything happens. And they actually have a jacket that fits me. I don't know what happened to this guy, but I hope he's up there in one of the rooms. Let's check the act this morning and see what's happening for our weather fans out there from coast to coast. Alpena, Michigan yesterday. Usually you'd find this time of the year it's about 65 degrees in the morning. 92, a record-breaking heat wave. Also look out today, severe thunderstorms around the Great Lakes except the upper peninsula of Michigan. The Ohio Valley and the Tennessee Valley also possible for some severe thunderstorms. Also, the southern plains, central and northern Texas, and eastern New Mexico. Be on the alert. Hot and humid conditions in the southern plains exist again today in the southeast. It is hot and dry in the Great Basin, and that heat wave continues except for along the coast of California all the way up into Washington State. Interior could be as hot as 90 degrees. Fog this morning in southern California and the central Appalachians and the southeastern states. Here's what's happening in your world this morning. It'll be hot today with a 40% chance of a shower or a thunderstorm. Highs in the mid-90s. A 30% chance of a shower tonight. Henry Spencer lives in Wilkinsburg, Pennsylvania. He is 107 years old today. He used to have a push cart where he sold pies and barbecue chicken. He's known as the Pie Man, and he is in great shape. Bob Trout, I understand you have a hat for me. I do indeed. This is in to make you a deputy director of DCMH, and all the paramedics here have asked you to join them. Well, this is the finest hospital in the great Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and I'm delighted to be here. Thank you, Bob. Thank you very much. No uh, words could possibly say how anybody feels, I think, in this country about the passing of Jackie Gleason. I just learned of it a few minutes ago, and you can imagine he is one of my idols. And I understand Brian has a story about that now, and there'll be a special report from Miami. So we'll turn it back to New York. Thank you very much, Willard. On Close Up this morning, a look back at the life of the Great One. It was a partnership that began almost 40 years ago, when on the Cavalcade of Stars television show, Jackie Gleason first came up with the idea of putting on 16 beautiful dancing ladies. They, of course, became the June Taylor dancers and were the opening act on the Jackie Gleason show for 17 years. June Taylor is joining us this morning from our studio in Miami, and she is going to try to help us remember Jackie Gleason. And good morning to you, and thank you for coming. Good morning, Maria. His idea was to come up with 
these beautiful women to start dancing at the beginning of the show. A lot of people said that's a terrible idea, but he knew it wasn't. How did he get everybody to think it was a good idea? Well, out of a clear blue sky, at the very first meeting before we went on CBS on uh, 1952, he had this idea to have 16 girls to open the show. And we found through all the years on television, he had the greatest opening that anyone ever had, and he loved it. What was he like to work with? We've heard so many people describe him as a genius, a thoughtful man, so versatile. What was he like from your point of view? My dear, he was just a most absorbing, great talent to work with. He was inspiring. He was enthusiastic. But he was a very sensitive man also. Something I need to tell the world is every Saturday night before the Glass Jackie Gleason show, he used to send the 16 dancers and myself a box of roses every single week. No one ever knew that. Did he ever tell you why he did that? Because he appreciated the hard work the girls did and that we all put into his show. He was always very appreciative and he always wanted everybody to know how he really felt. And as I say, he was very inspiring to work with. He could get us all up. Was he fun? One has the impression that it must have been just laughs from beginning to end. Did he ad-lib? Did you ever know what was going to happen on that show? We never knew what was going to happen because it was just uh, something that was very, uh, uh, it was his talent that came out. It, uh, he had everybody laughing. If we ever got into some kind of a doldrum, he could snap us right out of it. Something when I was reading about him this morning, something I found very interesting, that he was involved in absolutely every aspect of this show, right down to the choreography, and that he was actually involved in planning a ballet that you were involved in. Jackie Gleason was a man that was in control of his own show. He knew exactly what he wanted to see and have done on his show. He was a composer. He made records. Yes, he wrote, uh, he composed a tawny ballet in 1953 where we used 76 dancers. They were black dancers, jazz dancers, ballet dancers, and the June Taylor dancers. And the New York Times gave him a bravo and said it was one of the best artistry things that had been done on tv what, and he, when he wanted you to to get, actually get out there and dance did he show you what he wanted to do did he himself dance out, out there on the stage uh no i can't say that it yes once in a while he would get up and say what if they did something like this or what if they did that june we have but, some footage let's take a look at what he was like on the screen for those who haven't seen it i'm sure everybody has June, was there any scene or, or act that he did that was his favorite? Everything he did was his favorite. He loved to write. He loved to compose. He loved to sing. He loved to dance. He loved to act. As I say, he was a sensitive talent, very sensitive talent. We've heard a lot about, as you've mentioned, what he was like to work with. You knew him also as a personal friend, as a family member. What was he like off the stage? Uh, sometimes he could be a very quiet man. He would sit and be in deep thought. I mean, he was like a, a diamond with many facets that shined in many ways. This, this was Jackie Gleason. June Taylor, thank you very much for joining us on what I know is a difficult moment for you. It is because the world is going to be very saddened without this man. I know we all are. Thank you very much. And we'll be back in just a moment, but first this is Today on NBC. Bunning the florist, we deliver smiles. Bunning the florist, we deliver smiles throughout Florida. Nourish it, work it out, pump it up. Of all the things we do for our bodies, these two people have proven the most vital thing could be picking up a book. And now, from Harvey and Marilyn Diamond, best-selling authors of Fit for Life, comes something even bigger, Living Health. With Fit for Life, the Diamonds took on the weight of the world. With Living Health, they make feeling good a way of life. If you want to live a healthier, happier life, you can. The wait is over. A super allocation of new Hondas just arrived at Moody Honda. Save thousands. 
New four-door Accords with air, plus these extras, just ten nine eighty seven. New four-door Civics with air and all this equipment, just eighty eight eighty seven. Honda Civics and Accords, number one in quality. Save thousands. It's true because of this super allocation, but only while they last, and only at Moody Honda in Fort Lauderdale. Nobody beats Lindsay's prices during Lindsay's greatest in-store warehouse sale going on now. Save up to 70% on pre-finished furniture, patio furniture, ceiling fans, lighting fixtures, and much more. Lindsay's warehouse is overstocked. This is brand new merchandise in factory cartons. All prices slashed up to 70%. All pre-finished furniture reduced. All patio furniture on sale. All ceiling fans unbelievably priced. All lighting fixtures must go. Nothing held back. It's the new Lindsay's greatest in-store warehouse sale going on now at all Lindsay stores. There's one near you. Be there. West Germany's refusal to extradite Muhammad Ali Ahmadi to this country for trial is causing some controversy. President Reagan says he's satisfied justice will be done, but others aren't so sure. Attorney General Edwin Meese has been in West Germany unsuccessfully pressing for Ahmadi's extradition. He joins us this morning from Hamburg. And good morning, Mr. Meese. Good morning. Are you, like the president, satisfied with the West German decision? Yes, I am, and I think uh, all Americans should be. The question of whether uh, Hamadi would be tried here in Germany or would be extradited to the United States was an issue that was entirely within the discretion of the German government under our extradition treaty. And they have chosen to try him fully and vigorously on all of the charges that he would have been tried on in the United States, plus an additional charge of possession of explosives for which only Germany had jurisdiction. Americans may have faith in Germany's determination to try him to the fullest extent of the law, but what kind of assurances have you that he won't be freed somewhere down the road? Well, the German uh, government has uh, clearly uh, indicated that they are going to try him uh, fully, as we would in our country, and uh, it's my understanding under the law that the penalty for murder here upon conviction would be a life sentence. But under the law, he could be released in 15 years, or he could be pardoned before that. Again, have you any assurances he won't be? Well, this government has said that they are not going to be involved in any, of the, uh, any kinds of arrangements like that, and that they uh, will prosecute him and, uh, to the fullest extent of the law. So, in a sense, their law is no different than the law in the United States, and I think they have the same determination to combat terrorism and to punish terrorism as we have. As I think you know, on this program Wednesday, uh, murdered Navy diver Robert Steedham's mother uh, expressed some disappointment with President Reagan's effort to gain extradition. When I reminded her that the president had made a personal appeal, she seemed to indicate that was not enough. Let me show you the tape and then get your reaction, if I might. Um, personal appeal, I... Um, saying that he would be satisfied with whatever the German government did does not, in my opinion, uh, seem to me like he made a personal appeal for him to be extradited. I think it was more or less saying, uh, you, you take the responsibility. I think um, the fact that he made a lot of promises to the families of the hostages uh, to do as much as they can to safeguard their well-being, I think um, bringing Hamadi to the United States probably would have broken many of those promises and again I you start compromising and one compromise leads to another what's your reaction to that sir well first of all the president has never compromised on this issue or any other issue relating to hostages uh, the, what the president knew and uh, I can certainly understand Mrs. Stetham's uh, concern uh, and her feelings because this was a terrible thing that happened but I think we also have to recognize the president knew the law and he knew that it was strictly within the discretion of Germany under our extradition treaty as to whether they prosecuted here or pro in Germany or prosecuted in the United States. Now the important thing that the president has said all along is that Hamadi be vigorously and fully prosecuted to the limit of the law. And that's what is happening and that's why I think we have to be satisfied with that result. There's no doubt in my mind about the determination and the vigor of the German prosecution. That's one of the things that I was assured in my meetings with them this week. Talking again of the president's role, I mean, how then do you account for the fact that even one of the president's biggest supporters, and I'm talking about Senator Alphonse D'Amato, said that the president did not vigorously pursue the matter and that his handling represented, in the senator's words, a dangerous capitulation of terrorists. Is he too way off base? 
Yes, I don't think Senator D'Amato uh, doesn't obviously know all of it that went on. Uh, I know the president uh, fully represented the point of view of the United States and also his understanding completely of the law. And I think it's not very helpful for politicians to make those kind of statements. Could you, sir, have made a stronger case to the West Germans in this case if this president had not been shown in the past to be willing to trade the arms for hostages as he has recently? Well, this president has never at any time given in to the demands of terrorists or hostage takers. Uh, the Iranian situation is quite a different thing, uh, as you well know. And so there is no question of any weakness or any compromise on the part of President Reagan. Uh, quite the contrary, his instructions to us uh, in the Justice Department and his conduct uh, at the summit meeting was exactly the same, and that was to be absolutely sure that the law was carried out fully and that Hamadi be prosecuted. We would have liked to have prosecuted him in the, in the United States under the extradition treaty, but we fully recognize that this was a decision that the Germans could make, and we are fully satisfied that they will prosecute him vigorously and fully in this country. Attorney General Edwin Meese, thank you. Thank you. 7.22 right now. We'll come back in just a moment. Much more ahead for Thursday morning, right after a break. This is Today on NBC. Information? Yes, I'd like the number for Modern Age Furniture, please. Well, did you know that Modern Age has your number? They do? Sure. This week, Modern Age has 10, 20, 30, 40, even 50% off furniture, rugs, and bedding. Great numbers, huh? Mm, those are my kind of numbers, all right. 10 to 50% off at Modern Age. Everybody loves those numbers. Once people hear Hello? about the discount numbers at Modern Man? Age, they don't hang around long. It's a sale too good to resist. If you've been looking around and around for a riding mower, look at the Toro 832 rear engine rider. In the most recent test by a leading independent consumer publication, a Toro was the only one to be rated number one. And since then, we've been going around making improvements, which keeps the other guys going around and around. See the number one rated Toro riding mower at these four dealers. Lincoln Mercury. Lincoln Town Cars discounted like never before. Hollywood Lincoln Mercury. New Cougars from 12333 loaded. Hollywood Lincoln Mercury. Sables from 11444 with rebate. Hollywood Lincoln Mercury. Register for two free glamorous trips for two. Free airfare, free hotel for two. Get the lowest Lincoln Mercury prices in Florida. And maybe win two free glamour trips. Only at Hollywood Lincoln Mercury. See the Bahamas, New Orleans, Atlanta in the summer. All from Hollywood Lincoln Mercury. The price leader on Sheridan at US1 in Hollywood. Now, let the competition beware. A simple repair job until they gave her the wrong shoe. Two men, neither giving an inch, fighting over a can of beer. $500 to fix a bad attitude, but all they got back was a nasty bird. These real cases prove the smallest things can turn into heated legal battles. That's when Judge Wapner decides who's right. The People's Court, where the little things mean a lot. Following Divorce Court, weekdays at 4.30 on WSVM. Going over some of the Jackie Gleason material this morning, you know, found out a, a do you, did you know? I didn't realize that, but Jackie Gleason along the way won a Tony. No, I didn't realize yeah, on that. Broadway for the play Take Me Along. We'll continue to profile him in our next half hour after the station. To understand the issues completely, experienced reporting is the foundation. The NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw. Publix gives you more for your money with SNH Green Stamps. Use them to fill stamp price certificates and save on stamp price specials like these. Assorted and decorated Scott towels, now just 29 cents a roll. Snow White fresh mushrooms, 16 ounces for $1.09. And assorted flavors of wishbone salad dressing, including sweet and spicy French and Dijon vinaigrette, just 29 cents for the 8-ounce size. Stamp price specials. Another reason why, when you expect more, Publix is your store. Ford and Fitz, your hometown news team, tonight at 6. News Center 7 today in Florida. The 725 update with Julie Feldman. Good morning. Fidel Castro capturing his nation's attention last night in a rare television appearance. He spoke out on a number of issues, and News Center 7's Michael Williams tells us how that speech was monitored here. 
Fidel Castro spoke directly to the Cuban people via television and radio from Havana's Palace of the Revolution. It was first on the agenda a lambasting of former party Central Committee member Luis Orlando Dominguez. Fired last week and arrested Monday, Dominguez, Castro says, used his office for great personal gain. But South Florida observers monitoring Castro's speech last night believe Dominguez was a convenient scapegoat for the recent Del Pino affair. That's because Dominguez was head of Cuba's version of the Federal Aviation Administration. And you'll recall it was a Cuban Cessna plane which General Rafael Del Pino and his family used to flee from Havana to Key West last month. By sacking Dominguez and presenting a take-charge image, observers believe Castro hopes to quell talk that his regime is in trouble. Uh, what we're seeing here is somebody being punished for the desertion of a high-ranking uh, military officer. What? And uh, the people in Cuba perceive that the Cuban regime is collapsing when a high-ranking military officer like Del Pino uh, leaves the country. After criticizing Dominguez for two and a half hours, Castro turned his ire on Del Pino himself. Observers say he tried to paint Del Pino's defection as one more step toward rooting out corruption. In reality, those observers say, Castro's entire speech is proof positive that the Del Pino affair continues to be a big embarrassment for his regime. Michael Williams, New Center 7. The owners of a Lauder Hill daycare facility under arrest this morning on child abuse charges. Augustus and Beryl Danville are accused of sexually abusing children in their care. For nearly three years, they ran a babysitting service out of their home in Lauder Hill. The couple was arrested after tests showed signs of sexual abuse on three young girls. Another big loss in the entertainment industry, the nation today mourning the death of comedian Jackie Gleason. His career in show business spanned more than five decades. A giant in the entertainment field, he was simply known as the Great One. Gleason died late last night at his home in Inverary. He was 71. I can do anything you can do better. No, you can. Yes, I can. No, you can. Yes, I can. No, you can. Yes, I can. No, you can. But I have professional strength. Rita Bug has the same strength. I can kill a whole house full of bugs. So can Rita Bug. This keeps killing for weeks. So does Rita Bug, and it costs a lot less. Rita Bug Home Insect Killer, the strongest, longest-lasting spray you can buy at any price. Say, uh, will, would you like a job? Where will you be when your laxative starts working? Where will you be? With Fleet brand glycerin suppositories, there's no worry. Fleet works when you want it to, in minutes. For fast, predictable relief, trust Fleet. It's predictable. How could you run out? Weight Watchers Andre? No kidding. Uncle Ben's rice? Hmm. Mustard? Tabasco brand pepper sauce. It's for more than you thought it was for. If you thought yesterday was hot, consider this. Today, partly cloudy temperatures in the mid-90s, a 40% chance of rain. Tonight, a low in the mid-70s. Tomorrow, much like today. Winds are out of the southwest at 10 knots. Seas are two feet or less. Bay and inland waters have a light to a moderate chop. It's 79 degrees in Miami, 80 degrees on the beach in Fort Lauderdale. It's 78 degrees. Go out and have yourself one terrific day. Try to stay cool. I'll be back next hour with more news, and I hope to see you then. Bye-bye. Rick Case, America's car dealer, makes it easy. With the lowest payment, no money down, and a $2,000 minimum trade on Acura. That's $2,000 for your car. New 87 Acura Integra, only $99.95, or $39 a week with no money down. Acura Legend, only $17.9 or $59 a week. Our goal is to sell Acuras from $500 to $800 less than anyone. That's why we're the South's largest Acura dealer. People drive hundreds of miles to Rick Case. Get a 10-day free trial now at Rick Case Acura on 441 at Sunrise, Fort Lauderdale. Pamela Sue Martin on Entertainment Tonight. We're back now, 7.30 on a uh, Thursday morning. There's Howie. That's Howie Earl. That's our video man. Howie's now been with the program, what, Howie, 19 years? Right? You were out here as a cameraman for a while, right? Back in the old days. <laughs> Welcome out front where Gene Shallon is wandering. And Gene, you've been here, what, 19? You've been more than 19. 15. 15 years? 15 years. Hmm. 
I said, if Howie can be here for, I'm joining him. <laughs> <laughs> Mario Shriver is joining us this week while Jane's away on vacation. Jane will be back with us next week. In this half hour, we're going to um, have a little bit more on the life and times of the great one, Jackie Gleason. We'll review the Gleason movie career in this half hour when we talk with a man who directed him in two of his recent films, Smokey and the Bandit and its sequel. Director Hal Needham will be with us shortly. And we'll also take a look back at an interview that you did with Jackie Gleason along with Bill Cosby. It was done uh, a while ago, and we'll Last repeat ball. it. Gene? Tom Hanks will be here this half hour. Actually, he was here some time before Gleason died because he worked with Jackie Gleason. That's why you don't hear any questions about that. But you'll hear some funny questions about Dragnet and Tom Hanks in this half hour. Let's move to the news desk. John Palmer over there, John. Thanks, Brian. The entertainment world, of course, this morning is mourning the death of the great one, Jackie Gleason, who died of cancer last night at his home near Fort Lauderdale. He was 71. Gleason became a television legend to generations of Americans as bus driver Ralph Cramden on The Honeymooners. Teamed with Art Carney and Audrey Meadows, the show became one of the biggest TV hits of the 1950s. His career spanned four decades on the stage, screen, and television. Gleason starred in more than 20 films, including Nothing in Common in 1986. Funeral services will be held Saturday for Jackie Gleason, who died of cancer at the age of 71. Comedian Milton Berle said of Gleason's death, we just lost a giant. Sid Caesar called him bigger than life, and dancer June Taylor, who worked with Gleason's show for many years in Miami, told Maria Shriver earlier here on Today her thoughts about him. Sometimes he could be a very quiet man. He would sit and be in deep thought. I mean, he was like a, a diamond with many facets that shined in many ways. This, this was Jackie Gleason. In other news this morning at the Vatican, Pope John Paul is meeting Austrian President Kurt Wald Waldheim, a session that has outraged Jewish leaders. Waldheim was welcomed by the Vatican for the controversial audience with the Pope. Waldheim has been barred from entering this country because of his Nazi past and his alleged involvement in World War II atrocities. At the Vatican, several Jewish groups have gathered in St. Peter's Square to protest his visit, a visit they call morally reprehensible. Attorney General Edwin Meese said this morning the United States accepts the decision by the Bonn government not to extradite hijacked suspect Mohammed Hamadi to this country to stand trial. On Wednesday, West Germany officially announced that it will put Hamadi on trial for murder and air piracy. Some people in this country have been concerned that West Germany may try to exchange Hamadi for two German hostages held in Lebanon. Earlier here on Today, Meese told Bryant that is not likely to happen. Well, this government has said that they are not going to be involved in any, the, uh, any kinds of arrangements like that and that they uh, will prosecute him and, uh, to the fullest extent of the law. So, in a sense, their law is no different than the law in the United States, and I think they have the same determination to combat terrorism and to punish terrorism as we have. Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North, the key figure in the Iran-Contra affair, apparently will testify on Capitol Hill, both in public and in private. Congressional investigators announced Wednesday that North will meet privately next week with the Iran-Contra committee and publicly the following week. Hearings in the Iran-Contra affair are continuing today with testimony from Charles Cooper, a Justice Department official. In London this morning, it's opening day for a new parliament. Queen Elizabeth took her traditional ride from Buckingham Palace to open the new session. The Queen then went before the House of Commons to outline the legislative program drawn up by the government. In her speech, the Queen called for measures to curb the power of local governments. She also proposed a bill to allow pubs to stay open 12 hours a day, except on Sundays. A little past 34 after the hour. Back to Brian. All right, John. Thanks very much. Willard has a check of the weather in just a moment. And then Gene Shallot talks with Tom Hanks. That's right after these messages. In the morning, in the evening, Carnival's got the fun. Not much money. But oh, honey, Carnival's got the fun. It's such a good time with friends and news. Come there's just no time like the Carnival Cruise. Sunny weather. All together, Carnival's got the fun. Take a three, four, seven-day cruise on Carnival, the most popular cruise line in the world. Introducing Metaprint when your body hasn't got time for the pain. I haven't got time for the pain. No, I haven't got time for the pain anymore. Metaprint has ibuprofen, the prescription ingredient recommended by doctors two to one over aspirin for body pain, including minor arthritis pain. And it's gentler to your stomach than aspirin. I haven't got time for the pain. 
when your body hasn't got time for the pain. New Metaprin from the makers of Tylenol products. Here's Martha Ray with big news. Folks, it's official. The big mouth is now the fresh mouth. And here's why. Introducing Super Strength Polydent, now with a minty mouthwash ingredient. So it freshens dentures as it cleans them. Look, new Polydent Super Strength powers away tough food stains. And now the minty mouthwash ingredient freshens your dentures. So take it from the big mouth. I mean the fresh mouth. Try new Super Strength Polydent Green. It freshens as it cleans. Ah. Comfort's coming. Train announces a revolution in comfort. The XL1200 air conditioner. It comes with the comfort of up to 50% greater energy efficiency. The comfort of an exclusive 10-year warranty. The comfort of a specially trained serviceman who knows it well. The XL1200 air conditioner. Get comfortable with it. Comfort's coming from Train. Train air conditioning. 50 million people take comfort in it. Coming up on 737, it's time for us to take a check of our Thursday morning weather. Once more, out to Pennsylvania, and my friend Willard Scott. Willard, floor is yours. Hey, thank you, Brian. Such a pretty part of the country. It's such a spectacular day for us to be here to celebrate the 60th birthday of the Delaware County Memorial Hospital, and that's why we're here. Also, want to mention the USS Santee, escort carrier, the queen of the flat tops in World War II, served so beautifully in the Pacific. A uh, uh, reunion of its crew will take place now through the 28th of this month in Omaha, Nebraska. I want you to meet Richard Thomas, who's president of this magnificent hospital. Beautiful hospital, Richard. Thank you very much. Uh, we're honored that you, you and NBC have decided to join us today, uh, Willard, to celebrate our 60th anniversary. Well, I'm getting older, Dick, and I'm, I may need some help in a few years. As, you know, I accept Payola. And that, that's a little town up here in the railroad line. Isn't that's it? a little town not too far from us. <laughs> Payola, Pennsylvania. That's correct. So many hospitals seem to be in trouble these days. Financial problems, all sorts of administrative problems. What is your secret? This hospital is very successful, I'm told. Yeah, we are very successful, Willard, and we attribute it to uh, some very caring and some very competent medical staff people some and our people employees. Are, the board right behind. Look at these incredibly good-looking, intelligent-looking people. They devote thousands of hours. And and the, the guys look pretty good, too. <laughs> and I, I, I would be uh, remiss if I didn't introduce my friend, Kurt Weldon, U.S. Representative, uh, Congress of the United States from this district in Pennsylvania. I'm happy to be here. I'm proud of this hospital. They're, they're absolutely fantastic. And we're going to go down to Washington and do the art caucus That's right. later. We'll be at lunch there. We're a team. Listen. That's right. Do we get paid? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Let's check the Weather Act this morning and see what we have for our weather fans from coast to coast. As I say, Alpena, Michigan had a record yesterday of 92 degrees. The heat continues, but see that nice cool sign? up over the northern Rockies. That cool air will begin to move into the northeast. It could not be any nicer than it is here in Philadelphia this morning in the Philadelphia area. It is beautiful. But cooler air in the northeast is expected. Look out today. Two really potential trouble spots. The Great Lakes, except the UP of Michigan, and the Ohio and Tennessee valleys, and also the southern plains, the central and northern part of Texas, and eastern New Mexico. Be on the lookout today for possibly severe weather. Hot and muggy in the southeast and just plain hot all the way up through the valley sections of Washington State. Temperatures is High as 90 degrees. Here's what's happening in your world this morning. It'll be hot today with a 40% chance of a shower or a thunderstorm. Highs in the mid-90s. A 30% chance of a shower tonight. It is time now to, we're going to cut the ribbon here, and we're going to do this gracefully to celebrate the 60th anniversary for the Delaware County Memorial Hospital. This is the really big reason we're here. May I do this? Please do. We don't have a surgeon for this. Are you ready? <laughs> One, two. How about Thank that? You. Congratulations. Thank you. It's 739, and Gene Shalit's on tape. Thank you for my award. Thank you for coming. For all those who don't know Tom Hanks, welcome back from Antarctica. Tom's new movie is called Dragnet. He and Dan Aykroyd in a comedy. Danny was here yesterday, and I was very disappointed in Aykroyd because you couldn't remember the music from Dragnet. The big you can tree. The, that. Uh, Let's the, hear the big the tree. The sting. Da, 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 da. And then there's, of course, the... Yeah, da, 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 da. And then there's... Uh, oh, no, I can't remember it either. That was when they were usually walking around halls and driving around the city. But you never hear that music when you're making the movie. You sure do in your head, though. Do you? Yeah, yeah. As soon as, especially after you're sitting next to Danny in a, in a Ford driving up and down Hollywood Boulevard, <laughs> you hear that music very much so, yes. Now, the big news is that Tom Hanks does not get the girl for the first time at 364 movies. Well, I don't get the main girl, and that was actually one of the reasons that I was intrigued by the script after playing this, this, 
I don't know, rake countless times who ends up in bed uh, about every other scene in some of these movies. Uh, <laughs> and with some quit pretty nice babes, too, as a matter of fact. Uh, uh, it was, it was, uh, was going to be a pleasure to go to work every day and not have to strip down in order to slip in between the sheets. But, but of course, by the time we got around to making it, you, you'll, you'll see me uh, on, the, on, the, on the mattresses a couple <laughs> of times in this one. That's really hard work, slipping in between the sheets with Daryl Hannon and these other people that you've had to make these um, movies? No, I'm not going to say well, You get paid for that besides, don't you? It's a, and it's not a bad gig. It's not a bad gig, no. Now, I'm going to mention two names. What comes to mind? Corey Snyder and Joe Carter. Oh, the, the Cleveland Indians, sure, the tribe. Uh, I'm, I'm a member of the Wahoo Watch, you bet, sure. Now, you're a Cleveland Indian fan. Yes, sir, I am. We always wanted to meet one. Uh, I'm the one, and I'm, I'm the biggest. As a matter of fact, I was just uh, uh, in Anaheim for their three-game stand against the Angels just last week. You go every day? Ago. I went every day, all three games. You wear a T-shirt? I wore a Chief Wahoo on a on A, a, on a Chief brim. Wahoo? Yeah. Now, you come from San Francisco. You lived in New York when you wanted to become an actor. Mm -hmm. How did you get to be a Cleveland Indian fan? I was in Cleveland for three seasons of the Great Lake Shakespeare Festival, uh -huh. and when actors have day off, they, they either sleep or they go to the ball games. At least that's what I did. So I spent a lot of time... Uh, with Clive Rosengren in Section 19 of Cleveland Lakefront Municipal Stadium. You not only get a seat there, you get a section. The when you entire section. I think we figured it out. There was like one fan for every 52 seats. So you can put your lunch. Yeah, put your feet in the A lot seat. of foul balls. It got to be ludicrous. I don't want any more. Let's just let them collect over there. We don't need them. So you started in classical acting. I mean, you did Shakespeare? I did Shakespeare, yes. O'Neill was your first stimulus? I mean, when you were a kid, you saw Long oh, Days. Oh, oh, the Ice Man Cometh. The, the Ice Man Cometh at the Berkeley Repertory Theater, yeah. yeah. That, and that was uh, 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 a bit impressionable, I guess, but four hours of, uh, of mesmerizing uh, uh, theater. But Shakespeare got to you. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's not, there's not to quite like it. And I, actually, I was completely unprepared for that. They just kind of threw, threw a leather jerkin on me and tossed me out there. But I was working with people who had who had been doing it for years and had studied quite uh, extensively. So it was I got the best break any actor could possibly want in in the United States of America. You you don't get classic repertory, rotating repertory theater training anywhere else anymore. But in, was, in this country, it was good. It prepared you for getting in the sheets and taking your clothes off in Hollywood movies. It, it prepared me very much for sitting in a Ford next to Dan Aykroyd and riding up and down Hollywood Boulevard. Well, Dragnet is a very funny picture. We're going to take a look at a little moment from the new comedy Dragnet. Tom Hanks. Danny Aykroyd. Look at the monitor, Hanks. 8.47 a.m. Captain Gannon had assigned me to investigate the so-called pagan robberies, a pattern of serial crimes which had occurred throughout the city. They seemed merely irritating at first, but were quickly gaining notoriety through their growing frequency and naked brazenness. I was to contact my new partner at the central receiving lot. A less experienced peace officer might have been concerned he was getting potluck, but I knew that any detective the department had to offer me was automatically worthy of my respect. Say, Sergeant Friday? Who wants to know? I'm Pep Strebeck. I'm your new partner. I'm not looking like that, you aren't, mister. Oh, really? What's that supposed to mean? It means I don't care what undercover rock you crawled out from. There's a dress code for detectives in robbery homicide. Section 3-605, 0.10, 0.20, 0.22, 0.24, 0.26, 0.50, 0.75, 0.75, 0.75, 0.75, 0.75, 0.75, 0.75, 0.75, 0.75, 0.75, 0.75, 0.75, 0.
There came a moment when all the elements came together. Unleashing a superbly equipped new breed of compact car. The Dodge Shadow. With two or four door availability. Affordable price. A 770 protection plan. The new Dodge Shadow is going to cast a giant shadow across America. Dodge. Setting new standards of performance. This house is just lovely, but to the Stevens, it's so much more. They planned the future next to that fireplace. Celebrated holidays full of laughter in this dining room. And whispered countless bedtime stories right here. This is where their heart is. This is their home. That's why only one paint was ever good enough. Benjamin Moore. They wouldn't settle for anything less. Would you? When something means so much, see your Benjamin Moore dealer. It's the JCPenney semi-annual foundation and white sale, where everything that touches you is as soft as our prices. Like satiny bras and panties, lacy camisoles and slips, all 25% off. With plush luxury towels and solids and patterns, every day only $3.99. Save on all pillows, blankets, comforters. Plain hem sheets on sale for $3.99. Come get a taste of the soft life at our foundation and white sale. You're looking smarter than ever at JCPenney, yeah. Looking back on Jackie Gleason's career, one thing that seems indisputable is that he always called the shots. He was a producer, a director, and a writer, and was devoted to pursuing all aspects of show business. One person who directed Jackie in two movies, Smokey and the Bandit, and its sequel is Hal Needham. He joins us this morning from our newsroom in Burbank. Good morning, Hal Needham. Good morning, Brad. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you doing? Ah, uh, just wonderful. Was it difficult to direct Gleason, a man who was very accustomed to calling his own shots, pursuing his own way? <laughs> I, I've been asked that a number of times, and I always tell him that you didn't direct Gleason. What you did was he'd come in in the morning and he'd say, Pally, and it, uh, before he died, he would never knew my name, which is fine by me, but he'd say, <laughs> but he'd say Pally, what, what do you think about this? And he'd have it all written out. He'd say, what, about, what do you think about this for today's scene? And I'd say, it's fine with me, Mr. Gleason. Stand right over there and uh, let me know when you're ready. You, you, didn't, you didn't have to direct Gleason. I mean, he was a talent beyond belief. Was he a demanding man? No. Now, the only thing is, he didn't want to come to work and sit around for two or three, four hours waiting for you to get to him. When he came to work, he was ready to work, and when it was done, he wanted to go home. And uh, a number of times he'd come up and say, Mr. Director, he says, if you don't... Uh, Put me in front of the camera pretty soon. I might have a scotch and soda, and uh, so you better you better get it better get him in front of the camera. In your Smoky films, he played the part of a, a small town Southern sheriff, and that was so far removed from what he really was. I mean, the big city slickster. Why'd you draft Jackie for the role? Well, as a matter of fact, uh, Richard Boone was a good friend of mine, and <clears throat> my first thought was to get Richard Boone. Now, if you want to see how far in different directions you can go when you're casting, and uh, Richard was, uh, was busy, so the producer was Mort Engelberg, and he said, why don't we give it to Jackie Gleason? And I said, Jackie Gleason? I mean, like you're saying, you're talking about the, the city slicker and everything. He said, oh, he'd be phenomenal. So we talked about it, and I said, you know what? He really would be. Mm. We, sent him, we sent him the script, and he called back, and he said, uh, what makes you think I would want to do something like this? And I said, well, Mr. Gleason, I helped write that script, and I'm going to be the director, and nothing's etched in stone. I said, there is a very funny part there. And he said, you're right. He said, I'll do it. So that's how he came to, to be Buford T. Justice in uh, Smokey and the Bandit. Well, let's recall the finished product. We've got a bit of it uh, ready to roll here. If George Paulo helped me out, we can watch it. Okay. The evidence in the car. But, but Daddy, you, but Daddy, you the evidence in the car. I gotta barbecue your ass. They molasses. Put the evidence in the back. There's no way. No way that you could come from my loins. 
soon as I get home, the first thing I'm going to do is punch your mama in the mouth. <laughs> How we got go ahead well, let me let me just tell you that uh, I love television but in order to appreciate Gleason and, and Smokey and the Bandit you either have to see it on the big screen or you have to see it on tape because obviously you had to bleep sure. a few lines and but he was hilarious and nine tenths of what he said other than the plot lines was written by Jackie Gleason yeah I got about 30 seconds left how you got one quick single lasting memory of the man uh you know what, just the fact that last night when I heard that he had died and they were naming the big things that he had done and uh, basically the honeymooners and they went down through and when they said Smokey and the Bandit, I really felt, I felt real deep in the fact that I had had the pleasure of working with a man so talented. Well, Hal, thanks very much for getting up being with us. I appreciate it. My pleasure. 51 past the hour. In just a moment, we'll recall the last time we talked with Jackie, just last September. We'll do that after a station break. America's most huggable host on Classic Concentration Weekdays. What happened to $3,000 Toyotas? Since 1970, import taxes helped increase Toyota prices 50% and more. But now the Toyota distributor and Potemkin Toyota issue special incentives that negate these taxes. Get no tariff prices on new 87 Toyotas. Pickups and Tercels return to $39.95. 10 in stock. No tariff prices on new Toyotas at Potemkin Toyota. Stock market strategies tonight, live at 5. A little bit earlier this morning, Maria and I were recalling Jackie Gleason, and I was telling her that we just had an opportunity to speak with um, Jackie last September. Uh, at that time, we united him with Bill Cosby because two television shows which will figure prominently in TV history books are, of course, The Honeymooners and The Cosby Show. Last September, on a special edition of today, I had the opportunity to talk with both Jackie Gleason and Bill Cosby about something they both know better than most, what works on television and what doesn't. If I want to start a sitcom and have it be a hit, what do I need? What are the essential ingredients? Well, well the first Jack. thing you need is clout. Because if you try to explain a sitcom to uh, executives, you're in desperate trouble. <laughs> so the best way is to have clout, and they'll accept what you uh, want to do without you showing them. And then the audience will tell them whether it's good or bad. Let's talk about the occupations the key players should have. Jackie, I read that when the Honeymooners was first conceived, Ralph was supposed to be a cop. Now, why did you have him instead become a bus driver? Well, uh, a cop has too much authority for Ralph Cramden. Ralph Cramden couldn't handle that kind of authority. Bill Cliff Huxtable was supposed to be a chauffeur. Could he have succeeded as Dr. Cliff Huxtable has? I listen, uh, the chauffeur was killed at the dinner table by my wife, so I don't, <laughs> I don't know what happened there. <laughs> she told you it wouldn't work? She didn't tell me. It, it's more, it, was, it was more dangerous than that, Brian. She was an executive at the table telling me that it was canceled <laughs> if I was a chauffeur. You don't want to talk about the occupations. Let me get you to talk about, if I could, some of the people who worked with you. Now, though you both are comedy giants, you incorporated large roles for regulars in your cast. Why? Bill? Because, like Jackie's show, it's important to have the ensemble. It, I mean, when, when Norton comes on, your heart lifts up. <laughs> Jackie Norton was crucial, wasn't he? Absolutely. I say he was 95% of the honeymooners. A uh, uh, thing that I think should be mentioned is the people that you have in a sitcom must be liked by the people who are watching. The people who are watching must care for the people that are in the sitcom. Uh, oh. Bill has a lovely family to bring to an audience every week. That's very, very important. 
Jackie, I know it comes as news to a lot of people that Ralph and Alice, in one of the lost episodes, actually had a child for a time, adopted a child, and then the birth mother came and took the child back. I don't care how insistent she is. She put the kid up for adoption, didn't she? And I got her. I've had the kid for a week. I'm in love with her. Why didn't you have children on the show? Well, to begin with, uh, that would have meant more uh, lines to put into a script. Uh, it would have uh, hindered us a bit because we'd always have to have the kids in the scenes. And uh, most every sitcom has children, although at that time there weren't many uh, sitcoms. And as Bill knows, it's not easy to work with kids. They can walk away with a scene while you're uh, looking the other way. <laughs> <laughs> you both portray guys who really and truly love their wives. Now, why was that so important to establishing a relationship with the audience? Jackie? Well, if we didn't love our wives, what other saving grace would we have? Why would the audience care for us? We had to be in love with our wives especially Crandon, who is mad at everybody in the world. No matter how much you verbally beat up on Alice, you always kissed her at the end. Was that essential? Oh, yes. It was essential for two reasons. It is impossible to get a joke that will top everything you've done in the last half hour. So rather than attempt that, we went to this little neutral finish, which uh, not only served the purpose of looking for a big joke, but also, I think, was uh, warm and tender for the audience. Baby, you're the greatest. He was. He was the greatest. He's the best. I watch it every night in bed. The beneficiary of that bus is going to be with us uh, in our next hour. We've got a couple more tributes to Jackie to go. We'll get to him in just a moment. First, we're going to take these messages.